Ranking Member Westerman, and members of this subcommittee. I'm honored to testify before your committee today at this hearing on proposals for a Water Resources Development Act of WARDA 2020. WARDA bills are so important, not only to what we try to do in the Corps of Engineers, but also how they affect the people that we all try to serve. And, and I thank you very much for promoting a, a WARDA 2020. Thank you. The U.S. Army Civil Works Program is the nation's largest water resources program. It is a program that has three main missions, flood and storm damage reduction, commercial navigation, and aquatic ecosystem restoration. The water resources infrastructure that the Corps has constructed has contributed toward the nation's economy, helped communities to reduce their flood risk, and supports commercial navigation, and has contributed to the restoration of significant aquatic ecosystems. I would like to provide some overarching comments as the committee is considering next steps on WERDA. WERDA provides an opportunity to improve how the nation invests in water resources, including actions to enable stronger partnerships with non-federal interests. The administration believes this can be achieved by focus, focusing future authorizations of federal activities to those that are most warranted while encouraging more non-federal leadership and removing barriers that can impede the ability of non-federal parties to move forward on their own with investments in water resource infrastructure they deem as priorities. Given the large number of authorized projects that have not been started or completed, new project and study authorizations should focus on those most likely to provide high economic or environmental returns to the nation and to those most likely to address a significant risk to public safety within the three main mission area of the Army Civil Works Program, flood and storm damage reduction, commercial navigation, and aquatic ecosystem restoration. A key priority for the administration is encouraging stronger partnerships between the federal government and non-federal stakeholders. Stronger partnerships will help leverage a broader range of financial resources for infrastructure investment, encourage more non-federal leadership, and remove barriers that can impede the ability of non-federal partners to move forward with investments in water resource infrastructure they deem as their priorities. The administration has proposed several reforms to help accomplish this goal, such, some of which I will outline. Extending Section 1043B of Word 2014 as amended. This authority allows us to transform how we implement projects by transferring federal appropriations to non-federal sponsors to construct projects on their own. This is an important reform to help accelerate projects and create efficiencies. Divesting in the Washington Aqueduct. The Washington Aqueduct is the only water supply system in this nation owned and operated by the Corps. Divesting the Aqueduct would encourage a more efficient allocation of economic resources and mitigate risk to taxpayers. Establishing an inland waterway user fee. Establishing a user fee would help finance anticipated capital investments on the inland waterway system and a portion of the cost of operating and maintaining them to support transportation of goods along them. The current diesel fuel tax is insufficient to support the user's share of these costs. Streamlining permit processes and eliminating duplicative reviews we have streamlined permissions for modifications to how completed core projects that has eliminated weeks of review and reduced pending permissions by as much as 50% in many districts. I'm very proud of the Corps of Engineers and how they have managed to do that. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you here today. The rest of my testimony has been submitted for the record and I thank you again.